Hey guys, Queen of Flannel here. Um, so I had a few free moments uh, this afternoon, um, and I thought I would uh, come on and just do a little color and chat, put on some chill music. I got my coffee and um, work a little more on this page from... Hannah Carlson's Grains of Gold that I started on live stream the other day. Um, I finished the witch on stream and then I did the pumpkins off stream. I was actually working on these this morning while I was waiting for a uh, virtual appointment with my VA counselor. So, um, yeah, I thought I would just, I'd, I'd like to... I would like to get a picture finished this this month. I feel like I start too many and I don't end up finishing them. So hopefully, um, hopefully we can get this finished. Uh, probably not all in in one sitting today, but you know we'll we will see how it goes. Um, I'm just gonna take a sip of my coffee here. Uh, so if you missed the live stream. Um, totally just lost my train of thought. Um, I already showed off the book. I am working with the Arteza 120 set of expert colored pencils. Um, I had forgotten, uh, how much I enjoyed working with these pencils. The... Um, definitely don't layer, like, some of the, um, Prismas and your Polychromos and your, your Derwents and things like that. And they do layer, but not quite to the extent that some of the, um, the other pencils do. But I think they've done really well in this book. I like the way this has turned out, and they're affordable, so if you're looking for uh, a good affordable set of pencils, I don't recall off the top of my head how, um, how much, but if you're looking for something basic, and there's plenty of colors in here, so there's that. So I hope everyone is doing well on this fine Thursday, at least it's Thursday here in New York. But, uh, yeah, I've had a, it's been a week. So, um... I'm going to hazard a guess that most of y'all probably don't follow me on Twitter, but the, the saga of this vehicle has been shared over, over there. So, uh, last March we leased a brand new 2020 Kia Nero, and in May... It died and left me stranded and my child stranded by the uh, side of the road. Thankfully, not too far from um, from the house, but I had to call my husband from um, from work to come and get Joe. Um, I was still driving him to school because of COVID at that point. Um, so I had to call my husband to come get Joe and take him to school. And then I sat by the side of the road for, um, two hours waiting for the tow truck to come and get me. And there was a whole big 
saga of conversations that transpired in in between here so um i will spare you those those details but um the issue started about a week prior to it actually dying um it's a hybrid vehicle if you're not uh not familiar with the narrow and so when the issue started i called the dealership i got it from and they called me back and told me they did not have any hybrid certified technicians to work on the vehicle so basically they sold me a vehicle that they were not certified to work on they wanted me to take it 45 minutes away um and then at this point the lights had gone off so i was like okay well you know the lights off i will talk to my husband see what what to do see what we think because taking it 45 minutes away with a child and a working spouse would have um required some coordination so um so yeah, so uh, in the meantime, I found a, another Kia dealership that was like a mile from my house. Like I could walk there and back. And so I called them to make it an appointment because I knew it was going to need to go in um, one way or the other. Mind you, this is end of May. And this dealership tells me that uh, they can see it the beginning of July, two months. Yeah, a, about a month and a half to two months later. So I make the appointment just to have something on the books while I figure out whether or not I'm going to have to take it to the dealership 45 minutes away. Try to minimally drive the vehicle. Um, and then week afterwards dies and um has been sitting at the dealership a mile from my house because it had two hybrid batteries replaced a battery management module and who knows what else and so, you know, throughout this whole process, it was, um, you know, we were in contact with Kia Consumer Affairs and um, and at one point they offered us a, like, a good faith settlement to, I guess, you know, compensate for um, my inconvenience because at this point now we're down to one legal vehicle. And uh, my base is an hour and a half away, so I need a vehicle to, you know, get back and forth to base. I need a vehicle to get my child to and from school. Um, my husband needs a vehicle to get to work and um they were telling me at at this point that the first hybrid battery was going to um come from overseas there was none in the states and that it was going to take a while for it to come in and nobody would offer me a loaner car at, at this point um dealership that i got it from wouldn't um offer me a loaner car because i didn't take it to them which i can't take it to you guys you can't service it dealership that it ended up going to doesn't have a loaner car program i was told i could walk down to enterprise and rent myself a vehicle and then hopefully be reimbursed for it when my vehicle was fixed but considering that they were guessing at what was wrong with it and couldn't tell me when it would be fixed i don't exactly have that kind of cash to rent a vehicle out of 
like out of pocket. So um, the let's see, I'm trying to my timeline straight. So end of May, uh, mid June, I'm in New Jersey for uh, two weeks of military duty. And uh, I get told that the first hybrid battery was supposed to come in mid-June. Then that changed to mid-July. Mid-July rolls around and the battery is in. Um, I think it was 4th of July weekend-ish. I called for an update and was told, oh, yeah, your vehicle is good. You can come pick it up. Then an hour after that, I get a phone call um, saying, no, I don't know why she would tell you that. Um, the part just came in an hour ago. Your vehicle is not ready to pick up. It'll be... Tuesday ish, hopefully. Tuesday rolls around. Nope, still working on it. Thursday. Thursday rolls around. We're so sorry, but the part that we put in did not fix the issue. The lights are still coming on. So we had to order another part. And so, um, backtracking at um, some point in here, Consumer Affairs had offered me uh, the good faith payment, which when they first offered it to me, I said, no, I need a vehicle. Um, but, like, that's the that's the issue here. I need a vehicle. I don't want this lump sum of money. I want you to buy back this vehicle so that I can get my trade-in and whatnot back and um, what I've paid in lease payments for a vehicle that I have not been driving and go and buy a new vehicle. And at this point, because part more parts had been ordered, they just kept upping... No, oh, hold on. Um, no, that's later. See, this story is so confusing, even I lose track of, of like, what's happened. So, anyway, so um, I said, no, I didn't want the money. I wanted the car back, bought back, and she told me that would require further further explanation or escalation of my, my claim, and I said, okay, well, you do that. And then um, after talking to my husband, he's like, well, if they're just going to give us a lump sum of money, then we could just use that to, you know, put towards um, having another vehicle fixed. We had a Hummer H3 that we were given by my in-laws that had sat in Texas for um, quite a while and needed some work done. It was supposed to be a project car, and... Um, so I called um, Consumer Affairs back and said, okay, I'll take the good faith payment. She says, okay, I'll send you some paperwork to fill out. I don't get the paperwork, so I called um, like two days later, and she tells me, oh, I'm so sorry. I um if I if I misled you but you don't get that until your car is fixed and you get your car back and I'm like well that would have been nice to know ahead of time because I probably wouldn't have taken the payment at that point and would have pressed the other issue so um more parts were ordered they upped the good faith payment did not want to buy the vehicle back at this point. And so um, I'm, you know, about two weeks out from another two weeks of military duty. And I like I need a vehicle for for this trip. I can't leave my husband and my son and take the one 
legal vehicle. Um, so we ended up leasing a um a different vehicle, um, which left my husband with uh the the Ford Fusion. So we have two legal vehicles at this point. And I leave for two weeks of field duty. And I get notified while I'm there that I think we're on like part two at this point had come in and did not fix the issue. And so now we're we're end of mid to end of August here. Yeah. Mid mid August. And so um I get this email from Kia Consumer Affairs <laughs> telling me this. And so at this point now they are willing to initiate buying back the, the vehicle. Um and they they actually no at this point they didn't did not have the id the the they still didn't exactly know what was wrong so basically they're just ordering parts and throwing it at this car and hoping that um hoping that it sticks and so uh, i told the the lady i emailed her back that you know i'm i'm in the field um i don't have access to be able to like print anything out and and sign it um i would do it when i returned but that we were planning on taking the buyback option um so i finish up my my two weeks and i fly home i'm driving i'm driving back from the base i had legitimately like just come off of an airplane so i'm like brain dead and I get a call from the dealership saying that um, they think they have a um, a idea now of what was wrong with the the vehicle. I guess they had somebody at the shop from Kia Tech Line, um, and he was there to look at another vehicle, and they had him look at mine. And so they theorized that what had happened was the computer was bad all along. So when they replaced the first hybrid battery, the bad computer fried the brand new battery. So they had them put um, the old battery back in with um, with uh, one of the new parts, and it still didn't solve the issue. So they were going because now they had a new computer and a bad battery. So they were going to have to order another hybrid battery. So at this point, I'm trying to decide, OK, well, if we think we can fix it, I might consider taking the. The good faith payment um, and having, you know, potentially getting my vehicle back and then um and then that would be that would be it and so um when i went to talk to the dealership um they informed me that they were still guessing this was all like theoretical and there was no guarantees that it was going to work and that they had to wait for kia to approve a second hybrid battery replacement and that it was going to take months and this is the end of end of august and so at this point um I'm like, okay, the, I just, I'm just going to initiate having them buy, buy the vehicle back. I can't, you know, I can't, I can't deal with this anymore. Um, and the guy at the dealership like agreed with me. He's like, yeah, I would, I would do the same thing. 
And so I filled the paperwork out at the end of August. Um, at some point, I got a phone call saying that Kia had approved ordering the new part. And this was like September. Um, and I said, okay, well, I mean, that vehicle is being, being bought back. I'm waiting for um, Kia to let me know what the next, like, what my next steps are. And I emailed the consumer affairs lady back and asked, and she basically uh, was very abrupt with me in the email and said, oh, well, just give us time to process your claim. It was just put in the end of end of August. And I think y'all have had this vehicle or at this point three months. So telling yeah, telling me to just give you time give you time to process my claim when you guys have had three months to figure out what is wrong with this vehicle is um yeah. Your customer service is is not um, acceptable here. I mm, and so I just I I kind of like left it at, at that at that point in time, and um, and we ended up going in in um and getting another vehicle. So now we have two. Well, we have three vehicles, but um. Essentially, like, I have moved on from this this car, and I was anticipating that my buyback claim was probably going to be done before the vehicle was ever fixed. And I got a call yesterday from the dealership saying, hey, um, I just want to let you know that part came in and was replaced, and um, I took the vehicle out for, test, for some test drives, no lights on. Um, and it's good to go and you can come pick it up. And so now it's like, what, what do I do? I'm still paying the lease. Like I'm still paying my lease on this. They're supposed to reimburse me for my, my lease payments for the time that the vehicle has been in the shop, which I'm hoping they amend the, um, the original letter that they had me fill out since it's been in the shop for two months longer than what was originally like on that. Um, and I have heard nothing from consumer affairs. So now I'm like, can I, I mean, I can't afford three, three car payments. That's, you know, that's, that's a given. So it can just stay where it's at until I figure something out. So, I honestly was not expecting it to be repaired anytime soon, and I was not expecting it to, I like, I, I was expecting to be, like, done with this vehicle, and even if I did go and pick it up and bring it, bring it back, I don't trust it. Like, it died on me with my, with my child in the car. The customer service has been awful. And who's to say that it's not going to do it again? Like, so I guess I need to reach out to Kia Consumer Affairs and, um, and say, hey, like, what's, like, what's happening? But yeah, that's, um, I was honestly kind of shocked to get the phone call yesterday that uh that it was repaired i like when i got the voicemail i was like oh what fresh fresh heck is th is this so that was my day yesterday and uh i'm still working on the photos for my grandfather's um memorial this weekend i'm trying to figure out how to organize them and i need prints done of of some of them and um trying to you know 
I'm gonna put them in frames. Is it? I have no idea. But it's been a, uh, it has been an interesting few days. I also think that I ticked my boss off, which that's, uh, that's a story for another video. And really, I mean, he has no reason to be upset. But it is what it is. I've got three years until I retire. And then I can move on with my life. And let's see what else. Um, channel stuff. Still, you know, working on trying to put out content. Um, I'd like to do another watercolor video for next Wednesday. I still need to work on uh, part three of the Lonely Book Club, which will not come out this Friday. Unfortunately. Um, and then just hopefully have some things finished that I can show at the end of the month. It may end up being like a, a if I do a end of end of month. Oh gosh, I'm just spilling everything all over my desk. Oh no, she got coffee on her. No! Aww. Alright, you know what? I'll let that dry and then I'll come back and see if... Because I don't want to do it while it's... While it's wet. Um. But yeah, so my... If I do an end of month... Um completed pages video it may end up just being it may end up just being whips and I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with the background on this one um if I want to do something watercolor I could bust out the um the distress crayons and do a distress crayon background. Speaking of distress crayons, um, hopefully you guys saw Tim Holtz's live yesterday, or if you didn't, I'm sure you are aware of um, what is to come. So apparently these were supposed to come out with the um, the seasonal releases. But, um, COVID shipping related issues, I think they were missing some of, of them. They didn't have all of the colors. I don't exactly remember, but something happened and they decided to just hold, hold off until they had all of them before announcing it. But, um, there are distress mica crayons um coming out from uh ranger and tim holtz that line up with um the seasonal uh halloween and christmas seasonal colors that um were released this year so they are one and done once they're gone, that is that is it, unless he decides to bring them back 
um, next season. And I think he said something in his live about like if they if they do this again next year, um, it will be different colors. So these will probably be. Um, yeah. Use sparingly, I guess. But I mean, I ordered all four sets. It's um, it's two Halloween sets, two Christmas sets, and they come in packs of three. So, is it three? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Three. So four sets of three. Something like that. I don't know. If I'm wrong, somebody will correct me. But anyways, I ordered them. Um, hopefully, they, uh, hopefully they get here before the end of the month because it would be cool to use the Halloween, the Halloween crayons in, um, something Halloween before the end of the month. But if not, I mean... There's always next year. We just tuck them away. Um, and then we'll have the, the Christmas. So once they show up, there will be a video. Obviously, we're going to have to swatch those. So I'm looking forward to that. Um... It also reminds me I need to sign up for uh, one of the newsletters, so I get um, so I get like updates on that stuff and know when product announcements are coming. And the new distress color is supposed to be announced. Color or colors? I don't know if it's just one or if it's um. Either way, a new distress color will be announced on Saturday the 16th from what I'm I'm seeing, so that's exciting. And um would you guys be interested in a distress crayon video? Um I've done half of um, a background in one of my uh, Kirby books. It doesn't seem like they get a lot of... Um, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of, of use of them in the adult coloring community from what I've seen. A lot in the card making community. But if you guys would be interested in something using the distress crayons, I have all of them. Um, let me know in the comments, and I will gladly try and put um, put something together. Maybe I'll do the other half of the um, the Kirby background, so you guys can see what it looks like when it's when it's dried, and um, then basically like how I how I use them. So I really like how this is coming out so far. Um, I'll have to go in and do some blending after, after the fact, because it's hard to see with the book out here on, so far on my desk, because of the way, um, my camera is set up. But I think she's come out super cute. I know I've been moving my book like all over the all over the place, but it's just easier to work this way sometimes. So that I'm not like contorting my wrist. So I think we'll get the broom done today. 
and I shouldn't even really have to do much editing to this video as long as the audio sounds sounds all right. Wow, that covered over the coffee quite nicely. You can't even tell I spilled coffee on it. Um, let's see what we've got here. Um, what are we at? Uh, let's try and let's see. Yeah, let's try and get let's try and get these stems done, and then possibly the leaves. I'll go for another couple minutes. And I think that will be a good. Those are those are pretty similar colors. But yeah, I'm really happy with the way this has um this has come out so far. I think it's super cute. All right, let's see what I've got here. If this is gonna be too it's a little bright, but I can pull a different green, a darker green out. And then I might go over it with like one of the browns. Although, I guess in comparison to like, this is pretty bright in general. What was like the blue and and whatnot. And uh, I will pop the link to the live stream video in here if you're interest if you're interested in um, watching the uh, the coloring of the the witch because that was all done on live live stream. And I've been working on something else in another Hannah book with the color soft pencils. And I see now why people are frustrated, get frustrated with those pencils. They are very crumbly. Um, I would even hazard to say they are more crumbly than than Prismacolors. I don't know if it, it, like, I, I very rarely use my Prismacolors. I don't know if it's, they just, like, for, for my coloring, just don't mesh well with my, my style. Um, and, um, and when those break, like and the little pieces come off like they're easy to brush off of your your paper and it's not as like consistent if you just dial back your your um 
your pencil or how much pressure you're putting on the pencil but i've noticed the color softs like the like it's crumbly and clumpy so it's really difficult to to get some of those little little wax bits um off of your page with the the color softs and if you're not careful they end up sticking to your your page there was a couple times um cuz i was messing with them last night i was actually trying to very gently scrape pieces of the wax off of my my page cuz it's like um you uh you have to stop coloring pretty frequently Sorry, I'm just trying to sharpen this green pencil. You have to um, stop sharpening pretty frequently with those pencils because obviously if you color over the crumbles, then it is going to um, mess up your, your picture. So I felt like it was taking me quite a bit longer to um, to get anything done, and it bums me out because I'm um, I'm a Derwent fan girl. I've said this before. Um, I love my light fast pencils. I um, am a fan of the the Pro Colors. Not um, I love my Ink Tents. I need to do more work with the watercolor pencils, but I just I I enjoy their their products. They fit my my style and so it was a little you know, a little disappointing, but I kind of knew going into into it with how long they've been out on the market and just watching other other people's comments on them. Like I'll find a place for them. It just might be on um you know, maybe there's um a, a paper that those pencils work better on and I just have to um and I just have to find it cuz they blend beautifully. Like I was able to to get decent layers and and whatnot and so I liked that about them. I don't know. I guess for for me, um, because of the way I the way I color, I I sharpen my pencils a lot. So that is part of the reason I enjoy the um the pro colors and the polychromos, even though I haven't used my polychromos in quite some time. Um so some of the softer pencils where um they may not hold a point as as well I won't say I'm like that I feel like I'm wasting the pencil but I definitely have sharpened quite a few into um little nubs that probably could have lasted a little bit longer but that's just me and the way I color Yeah, I think these uh these leaves are definitely gonna need they're gonna need something, so
They're a little too spring. For me. So I might. Test. Uh, on one of these smaller leaves over here. Let's. Yeah, that's not horrible and then it kind of ties in some of the um the browns I use for the broom. All right, we'll finish up these leaves. And then I think all I'll have left to do is the cat. Some cleanup. And figure out what I'm going to do for a background. I'm almost thinking that maybe... Uh, some kind of like a, a tan in uh, either one of my watercolors or the Distress Crayon. Something like a gold tan. So yeah, this is working out pretty pretty well. I'm kind of using the uh the yellow to to uh blend out my darker colors. But I don't want to take it too far cuz there's a couple spots in here where I might go back in with the um the darker greens cuz some of my um my lines are a little a little harsh but I like the I like the uh, the the tone adding the yellow in which is hard to see on the camera but um this will go up over on Instagram when I actually finish it I actually like that just like around the edges. Ah, uh, so does anybody have any fun plans for Halloween? We got candy to hang out, but, you know, with COVID and, and whatnot, we were thinking of just um, plus our, uh, our front step is cracked and they won't be able to replace it for a month. And so I don't really want like little kids running up and down our, um, our front steps. So we're thinking about setting something up in our in our driveway and then I have no idea if my son is going to want to dress up this year like he has made comments about not really knowing what he wants to do and kind of needs to decide because if I'm going to 
have to get a costume of some sort. And I'm thinking he's at the age now where if he does um if he does want to go out, he's gonna wanna go with his friends and not hang out with mom. The ending of an era. Yeah, I like I like the way this looks. Just using the brown as kind of an accent around the uh the edges with just a little bit of a lighter lighter touch. I think it um it tones down the green and also just makes it makes things feel more uh cohesive cuz you know her hair is brown, the broom is brown. Um and I'm using the same uh browns that I use for for her hair with um save for uh I added in a a darker a darker brown just but just to keep things cohesive Basically, like, outlining these. Yeah. Camera doesn't do it justice, but let me... Yeah, it's it's hard to tell, and of course because these are wax-based pencils, and I've put down a fair bit of layering to get some of the the shine off of it. But um, it'll look better once I do the Instagram photo. But super happy with how she's coming out so far. I think once I'm done and while I'm waiting for this video to render, um, I'll probably work on our kitty and figure out what I'm gonna do for the uh, the background. So. That's going to bookend this video for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, for listening to me ramble about my Kia. Um, I appreciate it. Um, if you enjoy the content and you want to see more, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell to get notified when I post additional videos. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much.